On 19th of June 1867, the Mexican Emperor Maximilian I, the brother of Franz Joseph the Austrian Emperor, was executed in Mexico. With his death, the Habsburg reign over Mexico has come to an end. This is an interesting story that often overlooked when we are talking about or learning about the European history of the long 19th century. A story not just about the failed monarchy, but about the men who had forward-thinking ideas but wanted to achieve them in the wrong place at the wrong time, making the wrong decisions. But let's start this story on the beginning, just over a decade earlier in the 1850s. Back in the late 1850s, Mexico was not the best place to be if you can see it. The economy was tanked, the civil war was raging on between the liberals led by Benito Juarez and the conservatives led by Felix Zuraga. During this time, the Mexican government led by the conservatives had to take huge loans from multiple foreign powers to finance the war. Eventually, Juarez won and rose to power, and he had no other choice but to put a pause on all payments. The European countries lent the money to Mexico were, let's say, not really happy with the decision, so in 1861 the government of Great Britain, France and Spain met in London to discuss how to deal with the situation. The conclusion was that the three countries would join forces and organize a military intervention into Mexico to, let's say, convince the Mexicans to pay debt. So the plan was set and agreed, but at this time no one knew that France had some other plans in Mexico. At this time France was ruled by Napoleon III, and he wanted to expand the influence of France around the globe, and he was hoping that Mexico could become the part of the French world. In December of 1861 the European forces arrived at the port of Veracruz. The plan was for the joint army to take Veracruz and force the Mexican government into a conversation for a solution. They insisted that the European army is not here to conquer Mexico, but to ensure the debt is being paid. Understandably, the Mexican government was not that pleased to have them in the country, well, except the Mexican conservatives who were actually more than happy to see them over here. Sometime in 1862, France started to float the idea that the monarchy should be established in Mexico. And this was the clear indication to Spain and to the United Kingdom that they are not on the same page in France. Also, as the talks between the Europeans and the Mexican government broke down in the spring, France made it clear that they want to take control of Mexico. At this point, Spain and the United Kingdom, they made their own arrangement with the Mexican government and they withdrawn their troops from Mexico, leaving France to execute their own plan. The French army moved into action, occupying cities after cities, and the declaration of war was issued. On 10th of July 1863, the French had achieved their goal and the proclamation of empire was issued, officially establishing the Mexican monarchy. However, one thing was missing and that was the emperor. France was hoping to gain support from the strong local religious conservatives, also from the Austrian Habsburgs, with whom France had not always been on great terms. So Napoleon invited the Austrian Archduke Maximilian to become the new emperor of Mexico in 1864. Maximilian was born on 6th of July of 1832 in the Schönbrunn Palace in Vienna. From the young age he was very forward thinking and had liberal views regardless that he was a member of an old royal family. During his life he was a commander in chief of the Imperial Austrian Navy and briefly the Austrian Viceroy of Lombardy Venetia. During the revolutions 1840-49 Maximilian was with his brother on campaigns to fight rebellions throughout the Austrian Empire. In 1849, the revolution was put down in Austria and hundreds of rebels executed and thousands in prison. Maximilian was horrified and openly complained about the sense of brutality. A few years later, in the end of the 50s, he met the French Emperor Napoleon III in Paris, where he was approached by conservative Mexicans looking for a European royal to rule Mexico. Hey, I'm going to just pause the video for one second to ask you to like and subscribe to the video because it would help a lot with the algorithm here on YouTube. Thank you. Maximilian was facing a difficult challenge here as he wasn't really excited about this proposal nor was he as conservative as the locals were hoping for. Across the border from Mexico, the United States was again not really happy to have a powerful European puppet state next door, but as they were in the middle of the civil war, not much they could do at this time. Maximilian had new ideas and wanted to change Mexico for the better. 
despite being brought to power with the backing of Mexican conservatives and they hoped he would undo the reforms of the liberals. However, Maximilian had a different plan and aimed to create a government that included liberals and conservatives at the same time. In the summer of 1864, he announced that a political amnesty for all the liberals who wished to join the empire. It didn't take long for the conservatives to realize that Maximilian was way too liberal for their liking, but on the other hand, for the liberals, Maximilian was just a French puppet that they could never trust. Especially his power was granted by the French army still occupying Mexico. During his short reign, Maximilian issued eight volumes of laws covering all aspects of government and life. He implemented laws that granting Mexicans equality before the law and freedom of speech. He aimed to defend the rights of laborers, especially of the natives. Maximilian attempted to implement a law granting the natives a living wage and outlawing corporal punishment for them, also limiting the inheritance of debt. In these years, the French public back home was getting tired with the nation's involvement in Mexico, which was costing a lot with a very little return. As the Civil War ended, uh, the United States turned the attention to South, despite the Secretary of State maintaining the nation's stance of disapproval without action. Nevertheless, two generals, Sheridan and Grant, decided to take matters into their own hands. They began to offer secret aid to the liberal troops in Mexico, mainly along the Texas border. With all this in his favor, Juarez began to lead his men back into direct conflict with the French and Mexican army. During this time, France realized that their time was up here and this affair is becoming way too expensive for them. In 1866, the, all the French troops were ordered to withdraw from Mexico over the next year. Whether Austria had ever intended to send troops to replace the French army to maintain the Mexican crown is unknown, but they were warned from the United States to stay out of it. Also, let's not forget that around this time, Austria was involved in a war against the Prussians for the domination of the German-speaking world. Also, their navy was not really suited to conduct such a long-range intervention. At this point, Maximilian was in a difficult situation. The US-supported liberal troops were closing in, France was on the way out, and Austria was unable to help. He was advised to leave Mexico and return to safety in Austria. However, Maximilian decided to try to bring everyone to the same table and reach an agreement to continue his rule, so he chose to remain in Mexico. After being betrayed by one of his trusted colonel, Maximilian was taken into custody and after a short trial, the first and only Habsburg Emperor of Mexico was sentenced to death. On 19th of June 1867, the Emperor and his loyal generals were prepared for execution. Maximilian handed each member of the firing squad a gold coin, then pointed to his heart and inviting them to aim well and aim right here. His final words were, I forgive everyone and I ask everyone to forgive me. May my blood which is about to be spilled end the bloodshed which has been experienced in my new motherland. Long live Mexico. Long live its independence. A few months later, his remains were taken back to Austria by Adrian Tegatov aboard the warship SMS Novara and laid to his final rest in the imperial crypt in Vienna. Maximilian considered himself a liberal, supported Mexican liberalism, but he failed to recognize the fragility of his position. The implementation of liberalism in Mexico by a European monarch who was backed by the occupying French army to ensure the repayment of a loan was not a strong foundation for long-term rule. 